Today's topic is energy efficiency. And there's a lot of, uh, this is one of those words that has a lot of meanings in a lot of different contexts. Contexts. Um, but generally, when we say efficiency, what do we mean? If I say somebody is efficient compared to somebody not being efficient, what do I, what do I mean by that? They're good at doing what they do. In what way? How about take a shot, Corey? Doing um, using the energy that you make for a purpose. For a purpose, okay. You said. Uh, do something quickly. Doing something quickly and doing a good job at it. Okay. Nobody said it yet. Nobody said the thing I'm looking for is a particular thing that makes something efficient. You're talking about productive oh, or skilled. Oh, useful energy. Making it useful. Ah, okay. And useful. Um, the we have here using little energy. That's getting at it. You said what? Uh, making the most use out of what you have. Making the most use out of what you have. You're, you're starting to circle the, the drain of the right answer on this one. Um, yeah, I'm thinking um, greatest output with least input. That's, that's really what we mean by efficient. Somebody who's efficient does the same amount of work, work as someone who's inefficient with less work input. So somebody who is efficient, um, works well, gets things done with uh, less energy input than somebody who's not efficient, who uh, might not work as well. Like, I used to be a cook. That was what I was the year before I came here. Yeah. One of my at, well, my last cooking job was at the Common Ground, actually, when it was still a restaurant. Um, I was there. Uh, I was the head cook there for a year. Cooked all the dinner shifts except for the the Sunday dinner, and I was a very good cook, but I wasn't very efficient. Uh, a really good cook cleans up as they go, preps everything they're going to need, has everything organized and that was not me um, as you might imagine by the end of the night of making delicious food my kitchen looked like a disaster area there was stuff all over there there were cutting boards hanging halfway on the table and there were there was pots and pans soaking in the sink and there was you know there was great food but I was not efficient and I would also take until like one o'clock in the morning to break the kitchen down we closed at 10 so anyway just to let you know uh, that was inefficient, but anyway, so efficient, yeah, greatest work out with least energy in. So this is the efficiency equation. This says um, useful energy out divided by total energy in times 100 makes it a percentage. So uh, energy useful. Energy output divided by energy input. Okay. Uh, and so, and then of course you multiply times 100 and all that good percentage generating stuff. And here's a, here's a few problems up here just to give you some sense of what we're talking about. We know the second law of thermodynamics says, you don't have to write these down all in a row. We're going to get to each of them. Second law states that no energy conversion is 100% efficient. And so there is no energy efficiency that is 100%. Nothing is 100% efficient. Mechanical energy conversions approach that. Like if I have two pool balls, I shoot one, one hits the other. There's a very good transfer of energy mechanically. But all the other ones that we looked at, heat into electricity, um, heat into motion, chemical into electrical, they're, they're all going to lose power. And that's kind of what we have to look at. And the first one we're looking at is a, a hair dryer, like a, you know, blow dryer. This one, this one says uh, if a hair dryer wastes, 376 joules for every 1,500 joules it uses, how efficient is it? 
And so, let's uh, we'll leave the words up here, and we'll just put some uh, some numbers in with it. We'll do it in red. So, okay, what's our? What do we put? Where do we put what? What do we put where? Fifteen hundred on top. Fifteen hundred on top. Or we, if we weren't going to put it on top, where else would we put it on the bottom? Right, right, right. Our energy input. So it uses fifteen hundred. So that's our that's our energy input. So one thousand five hundred joules. Okay, and the energy output. What is the energy output? Three seventy-six. If we don't say three seventy-six, we'll look at it. Look at it again. I'm so, I'm so sorry. Thank you for playing our game. It would be eleven. There you go. Eleven twenty-four. Yes, actually, very good. 1124, because it says it wastes 376. Uh, 11, wait, wrong color. Jesus, I don't know. 1, 1, 2, 4 is the energy output. So what comes out onto my hair, to dry my hair in the morning, I'm sure you're picturing this. Uh, 1124. The amount of electricity that goes through the thing, as far as coming from the wall into the motor, making the motor turn, because what what kind of what kind of energy is this thing converting? By the way, if we if we were to talk about and, and actually I'm going to uh, I realized that I've got myself in a corner here. I need more space to work with, so I'm, I've got these written down. What's that? Well, because I've got this I've got the camera facing over here. Go ahead, say what? Electricity to heat. Electricity being converted to heat, and what else? Sound. Well, but but before the sound, Motion. what? Um, thank you. Yeah, okay. Motion, that's right. Kinetic energy. So we've got we've got kinetic energy and we've got heat energy. Because basically, whoops, the way it works is that inside of this thing, you've got, not only do you have a little motor turning that's causing the blower to blow air out, but you also have a heater, um, an electric coil that's heating up and glowing, and the, uh, the motor is blowing the air over that coil to heat it up. And so, you do the, uh, the calculation. Anybody already do this already? Thanks, guys. That's okay. That's no excuse. The old don't have a calculator excuse. Uh, and uh, it turns out that this, you get 0.27, and so that means 27% efficient. Many of our electricity to heat type conversions are going to end up being about that efficient. We'll see that later. Uh, so, okay, so that's 27% uh, efficient. Did I do that right? Wait a minute, that doesn't sound right. That calculation seems wrong. 1124, oops, 1124, divided by 1500. Yeah, I, I, I must have plugged that in wrong. I got 0.75. Seventy-five percent efficient, and, and our first clue should have been that this number would have to be a lot smaller for this to be twenty-seven percent efficient. Well, I still maintain that we're going to see a lot of electrical to heat efficiencies in the twenties, but let's forget about that for right now. Um, okay, so just making sure that we're with the program numerically. The next little example I want to put up is that if a if a process is 52% efficient, okay. so a process is 52% efficient, how many joules, how many joules of wasted energy If, was it 750 joules are put? No, it was uh, 800. Wait, wait, wait. 
Really? If 750 joules are put in, how many joules of wasted energy if 750 joules are put in? And that's, that's when you're like, wait a minute, okay, I have to stop and think about this. Because it would be easy to say, um, well, how, how are you going to solve this? How, like, mathematically, how do you wrap your head around solving this? When you have a percentage, oh, I wrote this wrong. Okay, well, fifty we'll, percent. What fifty percent was how the original problem was stated. I'm sorry. We'll go back to fifty percent. That's the one that, that you wrote down in your notes. So, is fifty percent efficient? How many joules of wasted energy if seven hundred fifty joules are put in? Three seventy-five says Mello, and he's absolutely right because. How do you figure this out? 750 joules, the way I would do this, times 0 0.5. Because anytime you have a percentage, if you want to put that percentage into play mathematically, you turn it into a, uh, a decimal number. So 50% turned into a decimal number is 0 0.550, actually. Uh, and so when you do that, you'll get... 375 joules as your answer. Can you just divide 750 by 2? You could just divide 750 by 2 also because of that because this 50% makes it a nice neat number. But if it said 17% efficient or whatever, you would just turn it into a decimal and multiply it times your original. Okay. The next one has 52%. That's what was getting me all screwed up. Okay, so this one says a wind turbine has a 52% efficiency. Okay. Um, how much kinetic energy from the wind is needed to produce 800 joules? So how much kinetic energy to produce 800 joules? Question mark. Now this one, a little more confusing to look at. How do you do that? Before anybody says anything, let me just say, this time would be a really good time to use the efficiency formula. In other words, I'm just going to dive right into it. So, if efficiency equals energy in, or excuse me, energy out, divided by energy in, times 100, blah, blah. Um, in this case, we have this, and we have this. So what we don't have is this, and so we just have to solve for this. We know the efficiency, 52%, and don't forget when I want to put that into play mathematically, whoa, I don't change the number, I put 0.52 equals, well, I have energy out, 800 joules, divided by x. That's, that's what we have here mathematically. I told you there would be algebra. Okay, and uh, and so now if you want to just solve for x here, the way that I would do this, going back, so 0.52x equals 800j. In other words, I multiply by x on both sides, and then I'm going to divide by 0.52. So x equals 800 joules divided by 0.52. And when I do that, 800 divided by 0.52, that gives me 1,538 what? Markers? Tired teachers who still wish it was the weekend? Yep. Cups of coffee. The measurement of J's. J's.
Or better yet, jewels. Yes. It's 1,538 jewels, folks. Here it was, right here. Just, just a reminder to not lose track of what units you're doing in a calculation. So, okay. So we get this answer: 1,538 joules. Does that make sense? Yes, it does. Because we're trying to make 800 joules. We're about 52% efficient. The amount of energy that we put in is almost twice as much as the energy we get out. So, 52% efficiency is 800 joules divided by 1,500 joules. So, so there you go. All right, we're almost there, folks. We're getting there. There's uh, folks. Folks. <laughs> Okay. This is fun, isn't it? Yeah. Oh, wow. I don't remember the last time I had this much fun. Oh, yeah. When I was having lunch. Okay, so I, I want to show you uh, this is called a, a Sankey diagram. Sankey? Named after, I can only assume, a guy named Sankey. No way. I hope his name was Yeknas. Oh, I did that right. Let me finish drawing this thing before you. Sankey. That'd be funny. Yeknas. Okay. Wonder what his nickname was. What do you think? I don't want to say on camera. Sank? It's just going to have to do. What, what a Sankey diagram does is visually represent energy lost in a system. And so in this example, we put in electrical energy of 100 joules, nice round percentage style number. and. We'll call this light energy. We'll call this heat energy. We'll write 10 joules here, and we'll write 90 joules here. Okay. Um, And so, is this an efficient process or an inefficient process? Okay, so the heat energy is what's being lost. That's an excellent question. Whether it's an efficient or an inefficient process has to do with what we're trying to produce. If we, if this were a, um, if this were a light bulb. Would this be an efficient process or an inefficient process? Inefficient. If this were a space heater, this would be a very efficient process. Right. So, and, and the, the reason that we could say that is that, okay, if we're trying to produce light, in other words, uh, so efficiency equals uh, 10 joules of light, <laughs> useful output, divided by 100 joules in, that's a 10% efficient process. But if we're trying to produce heat, then efficiency is 90 joules, oops, 90 joules of heat divided by 100 joules in. So it's a matter of what you're looking for. If this was a heater, this would be 90% efficient. If it was a light bulb, as is the case with light bulbs, they're between 5 and 10% efficient. Yeah. So that's how you read a Sankey diagram. All right. Let me give you one more problem in two parts. Go ahead and you, there you go, take a minute, write this down, then I'm going to give you another problem in two parts. So I'm going to give you a problem. Okay, so here's an electric tea kettle. So uh, this thing uses 400 joules 
of energy and in the process it produces about 10 joules of sound and about 300 joules of heat. Uh, the sound is measurable in uh, decibel, I guess, decibels, but it doesn't really matter. Um, and 300 joules is converted to heat. The rest is lost as kinetic energy as it sort of wobbles and makes noise. You guys have heard electric tea kettles. They like make a lot of noise sometimes yeah. before the thing blows. So, so kinetic is going to be the rest. So first, I want you to make a Sankey diagram. And I will be looking for this in your notes next time I collect this. So tomorrow. even if you've been blowing this off till now, I would make myself a Sankey diagram for this particular That's problem. Sound. sound, yeah. 10 joules sound, 300 joules heat. The rest is kinetic. Your Sankey diagram may look... What is the thing to plug in? Yeah, that's what, plugged into the wall. What is it? It's a tea kettle. Oh. Okay, the, the, the punchline to this activity is... And, and Okay, first of all, does your diagram look like this? Yeah. Yes. Yes and... Just backwards. Yes and... Hopefully yes and no. Yes, if I were to say it looks like this, but not exactly like this. Mine looks exactly like this. Okay. Shouldn't it have another little arrow? Says yeah, Bailey. Yeah. There's, there's some. So, unlike the other one, some is lost. Some is lost as sound. Some is lost as heat. So we can't put sound and heat in the same. Well, you could, but I mean, that's not, that's not like an accurate. There we go. That's not bad. What? No, this is. Does this it matter if it comes off the top or the bottom? Not to me. Uh, I mean, maybe to Sankey. Old Sankey, as I like to call him. Um, so, what is it? Uh, I would say maybe this is sound, heat, and kinetic. But the point is, some is lost to each of these. All right, and so, what's the efficiency of this kettle? Assuming that, that's the next question. So the efficiency at its actual purpose, which is heating water, not at making sound. Uh, efficiency equals question mark. Okay, so go ahead and work on that. And Everybody look away, I'm writing something up for the, on the camera for the people watching at home. I just can't pants. I looked. You looked. You already got the answer. Look. Right. Not so bad. That's the answer. Yeah. Oh, that's 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 yeah. So there's an ear on the ground. Right, because so all right, fine. I'm just gonna I'm just gonna go through it because I, I uh, yeah, so the answer is seventy five percent, and and the reason for that is um, both of these things, the ten joules of sound, and I guess what would be ninety joules uh, worth of kinetic energy, are the waste. We're trying to heat up water. We're not trying to make noise. If we wanted to make noise, we would have rented a PA system. Um, we're trying to heat water, and so the efficiency of heating water is 300 joules of heat divided by 400 joules of input. Technically, one of these would have to be converted because you're actually measuring your input in electricity. Be that as it may, uh, joules of heat. Uh, and when you do that, 300 divided by 400 is 0. 0.75, which is 75%. Okay? Does anybody have any questions about that? No? Okay. Very good. I'm going to turn this off now. Thank you very much for your attention. Oh, wait, 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 wait.
The secret word is chipmunk.